The AMD RX 9070 XT is such a good undervolter that you would be a fool for not undervolting it. You can literally get within 5 minutes of tweaking more performance, lower temperature, lower power consumption, lower noise and even fix the coil wine and memory temperature issues which a lot of cards unfortunately have. So with that said, welcome back at Emotion PSUs and here we are with yet another undervolting tutorial. Now, little disclaimer, this is gonna work for every single card out there, it doesn't matter the brand, it doesn't matter if it's an OC card or a non-OC card, and from the cheapest to the most expensive one it's gonna be the same. Now results will vary, but the procedure is the same. What we have here today is just a standard Asus Prime GPU and it took me a while to get this tutorial out because I wanted to try at least 10 different 9070s XTs but now we've done it so now I have the numbers for you guys. Usually we undervolt on this channel on the MSI Afterburner and Heaven Benchmark however since they locked out the curve I figured we can have one less software running and do everything in the included Adrenaline software which AMD automatically installs with the driver, kind of like the NVIDIA app. So we are doing everything there. Since this is not a curve, we also do not need to download Heaven Benchmark as in my other tutorials. Now, if it's the first video you watch from me, you don't know what any of these are, do not worry, okay? And let's get started. Now, the only thing I ask from you guys is at the end of the video, if the video is actually gonna help you, maybe drop a like and subscribe because the goal of my channel is to be able to try and put out tutorials on how to undervolt and overclock every single component out there and the only way I can do that is if you guys help me out with a like and by subscribing. So with that said, let's get started, let's start tweaking. Okay, here we are in Windows. Now the first thing we want to do is actually hit the Windows button and search in our type bar, Adrenaline. You just need to type ADR and open it up. It's a software which everyone has if you're running an AMD card. Make sure you're running the latest possible drivers. And now you want to go in the performance tab and the everything which we are gonna do, it's gonna be done over here. You then wanna go into tuning over there and ignore your CPU if you have a Ryzen CPU and go in the GPU tab. And we want to put in tuning control custom so we can change everything by ourselves. Now the first step is going to be to unlock all of these settings which are gonna allow us to actually change what we need. The only thing which you don't need to change is the one I just changed. So this one don't touch because the fan speed it's a whole different topic. If you want to change your fan speed, I actually have a dedicated video in MSI Afterburner, which I like better for fan speed control, but you can also use my same curve and put it over here if you want. But we don't care about that at the moment. So unlock the power tuning also. So you basically want to unlock GPU tuning, VRAM tuning, and power tuning. First thing which we need to do, which is gonna be our actual undervolt, is going to be our voltage offset. So go over here and uh, I'm gonna first of all give you guys some settings which you can basically just copy and uh, forget about it because it's gonna work for basically everyone. And the first settings are going to be strictly as an undervolt, so strictly for efficiency. So what you want to do is go there and hit 80, go down there and put 2700, okay? And click here and put fast timing. At this point, technically, this is already an undervolt, but if you're doing this for efficiency, you also want to move the slider as to have minus 10 over there. And you can then apply changes and be very happy. Now, I'm also gonna show you guys how you can actually save this, which a lot of other tutorials are not doing. And then we can actually discuss more in depth what we are doing and how you can do it for yourself. So you see those things on top here, basically, you can go over there and go export profile and uh, you're gonna be able to, for example, choose desktop and name the profile uh, Undervolt and then save it. So if you ever lose your settings over there, you can just uh, click import profile and go on desktop, choose your profile, open it up, proceed, and it's gonna basically restore all of your settings immediately. So you're gonna have them here. So this is just how you save stuff other than hitting apply on top. So with that said, let's actually talk about this because there's a lot more you can do. So the voltage offset is actually what's giving you both more performance and lower temperature. Because if we lower the curve, we free up power limit and power limit is the key to this board. Minus 80 is gonna work for most people, but if you're very unlucky, you're gonna have to put minus 60. So this is if you're just very unlucky, you have a really bad card, 
minus 60 is gonna work. However, your results vary a lot depending on the silicon quality. So I have one card, which is an Asus card, which can do minus 120 stable on every single game I tried and it never crashed. So your range is going to be anywhere from minus 60 or let's say minus 50 if you're just really unlucky. Even the worst card can do minus 50. The worst card I've had can do minus 60 fully stable for weeks. So that's the lower end. The upper end is going to be, in my opinion, 120. I didn't have a card fully stable at more than 120. However, if you want it stable for one single game, okay, then you can go even lower. And uh, for example, 150, I've had stable in Fortnite. This is really where my cards are topping out. But theoretically, the lower you go, the better it is. But uh, if I try to put minus 200, my whole PC would just crash. So on average, minus 80 is going to work, but this may change. Memory, okay? So fast timing, of course, anything which you change over here, you want to test. And you should test it out in gaming, find where you crash and uh, dial it back a little bit. But fast timings tend to work for everyone. And this also helps with latency, I believe. In terms of memory frequency, 2700 is pretty conservative. I've had most of my cards do 2750 stable. So like this, but quite a few, and uh, I mean seven out of 10 of my cards can do 2800 stable. And the more you put here, the more performance you're gonna have. However, important thing, um, if your memory is running too hot or if you don't care about performance and you're doing this just for efficiency, this one, you could even just not do it at all. Okay, if you don't care at all about memory, if you don't care about performance, etc. Okay, and now after we've done all of this, so for example, 2750, this card is the maximum it can do, minus 80, okay, we can then move on to maybe the most important tab and probably the least understood one. How this works is uh, you can even slide it all the way down to minus 30, but you can also go over and go, for example, at plus 10. And this is percentage power. Now, this is going to allow you to use the same voltage settings and the same RAM frequency settings to have a completely different outcome. So if you put it, for example, on minus 30, which I actually recommend you do, this is going to be your maximum efficiency point. So you're going to lose a few FPS, very little, but drop around 100 watts from your card by doing this, okay? The minus 10, which I was recommending at the beginning, is basically a sweet spot where you are losing 0% performance because we're also doing a little overclock on our memory and you're actually gaining a few percentage points in my testing by doing minus 10 with those settings over there. However, if you go ahead and actually put plus 10, your card is gonna run hot with a lot of power but you're gonna gain around 10% performance compared to stock if you overclock your memory and get a good offset going. So these are the three settings. Basically, you need to find your voltage offset, which is gonna be the same. You need to find your maximum VRAM frequency, which is gonna be the same. And then you can test or decide which kind of behavior you want from your card by using the power limit. And once you've decided, just hit apply changes save the profile as I showed you, and then test out the card. We also have a stress test here, but uh, you better off just play some games, run Furmark and stuff like that. And this is basically how you undervolt the RX 970 XT. This is actually the same for the 9070 uh, non-XT, just a little spoiler. I will do a dedicated video, but the numbers are the same. I find on average, you can go a bit lower with the offset, but it's the same. So it's a lot different from Nvidia cards, but I hope it was clear. If it wasn't, please drop a comment down below. I wanna help you guys out. And if you have some better settings, let me know. And if you watched the video this far, remember your promise, drop a like and subscribe. And I hope to see you guys in another video. I have tutorials for CPUs as well, in case you want to check them out. And I wish you guys a very good day. Bye-bye.